Hello and welcome to Animal Watch and this week we're talking the Chinese Chongqing dog. <laughs> Ancient, unusual looking, and with very, very few in existence, meet the world's rarest dog, the Chinese Chongqing, otherwise known as the bamboo dog, due to his tail resembling a small bamboo stick. The history of this incredible dog can be traced back as far as BC 202 in China, where the Chongqing dogs were often buried with humans of nobility to accompany them to the afterlife. When not protecting the dead, these fiery and charismatic dogs were used for hunting in the mountainous areas of East Sichuan. Their short, harsh coat, which can look like they're practically hairless, helps protect them from the sharp and scratchy bushes while out hunting. But why so rare? Well, after the SARS outbreak in 2003, this breed, along with millions of other dogs, were culled to a fraction of their existence in China. Luckily for them, they hung on by a hair's breadth, but are so rare now that only a couple of thousand can be found throughout the entire world. Said to be as rare as the giant panda, these pups are gradually making a comeback and people are only just discovering what they look like and their wonderful quirky character and feisty presence. Today I am meeting two of the only Chongqing to live in the United Kingdom. I myself had never heard of this breed until last month and along with the unusual looking Solo who appeared in a previous episode, the Chongqing is certainly one of the strangest dogs to have ever appeared on Animal Watch. I'm visiting Dave Holt in the Stockport area of the United Kingdom who cares for two of these unusual and rare dogs and I can't wait to find out everything there is about keeping one of these wrinkly but beautiful creatures. Hello! Oh my goodness me, what have we got here? We've got our Chinese Chung Quings. They are the most unusual looking dogs that I have ever seen in my life. Wow! Look at them! Yeah, they're beautiful, aren't they? Do you want to come in? I would love to come in and meet them. Well, I'm here with Dave and we have some incredibly unusual dogs here with us today. Wrinkly, slightly bald. I've been told are some of the rarest dogs in the world. They're the Chinese Chong, Chongqing. That's correct, yep. Yeah. Chongqing, and they come from China, obviously. But these are incredibly rare dogs, aren't they, in, the, in modern day? I mean, at one yeah. point there was a lot of them, but at the moment, supposedly about 2,000, isn't it? They there? say about 2,000 left in the world, yeah. And even though um, they're from China, they're even rare in China. There are, you know, so even some Chinese people now of the younger generations that don't know about these, yeah. even though these are incredibly ancient working breed that come yeah. from China, aren't they? So why are these dogs so rare? Well, back when China became communist, they decided that dogs were actually a luxury and that people shouldn't have them. So there was a mass cull of dogs, and we're not talking just these types of dogs, but all dogs all over China were culled. And these dogs initially got away with it because they were working dogs up in the mountains and um, they were still valued as, you know, working breed. And also because they were living up in remote villages, they tended to escape this mass cull. But unfortunately, when the SARS outbreak happened, you know, a few years ago, um, again, all the dogs were heavily, heavily killed. And these poor dogs, they did not escape that cull the second time around. So the, the numbers were heavily reduced down, yeah. weren't they? How many do you think are in the UK at the moment? I have a friend who's got, I think he's got three. Um, I think there's about six. About six of them in the UK, so really, really unusual. And I tell you, the last time I filmed a really unusual dog like this was the Solo, yeah. which is the Mexican hairless dog. And um, they have almost a similar background because the, the, the background of this breed is not only are the fact that they're incredible working breed that, were, that are used on farms 
to rat, to go out, to go hunting, to guard the farm, but also there has been loads of these dogs' bones found in tombs going back into BC times where they were put with the bones of people when they were being buried as guardians of the dead. So in a similar way to the Solo, they were valued as guardians of, of the dead whilst going to the, the afterlife. What's the temperament like of these dogs? I mean, I have a lot of dogs. Now, around my dogs, they're perfectly fine. They took a bit of uh, getting into the, used to into the pack with them, but yeah, no, they're fine around my dogs. They're a bit temperamental with other dogs, um, so you've got to keep your eye on them, you know, when you're out or on the park or whatnot with yeah. other dogs. Uh, with a family, they're superb with the children. I mean, my children are a little bit more grown up now. Yeah. I'm not so sure with a younger child yes. whether they'd be you know, suitable for that, but yeah, for mine are all teenagers and they're, yeah. they're perfectly fine. They're very, very um, loyal dogs. I would say because um, obviously they're into everything, as we can see oh, how yeah. utterly energetic they are. And because they were used for hunting and ratting and all that sort of stuff, um, you could almost describe them as being almost sort of like a Jack Russell. Yeah, it's so, very similar yeah. temperament. These dogs have to be heavily socialized. And if they're not socialized, they can actually be quite aggressive. So talking about the fact that if an owner has one of these dogs, they really need to be on the case from day one and, and really socializing, getting them out there, meeting people, meeting other dogs. Otherwise they could potentially have a problem with yeah, these dogs. Yeah, definitely. I they? mean, I'd definitely recommend an experienced dog owner to, to have one. Um, you've got to be on top of them from day one. Yeah. You know, if you give them an inch, they'll take a mile. And then you've just got to be on top of them. And yeah. you'll find that they, they do settle into perfect house dogs. They're not particularly responsive, though, are they, to commands? No. So if you let them off, do they tend? To, do they want to like just go and flush animals out? Is that the sort of instinct? They just them? want to go and play, and they're 100 mile an hour. They're off, and the recall on them isn't great. I mean, we we've had dog trainers in, so they're actually not so bad these, but you know we've had to have a trainer in to get the recall right. Mm. But they're just so inquisitive. They're out, and they just want to play, and like yeah. you say, just up to no good half the time. So what sort of family do you think would suit a dog like this? Someone that's super think, active? Yeah, I mean, you know, somebody that likes going out walking would be ideal, you know, people that spend a lot of time outdoors with them would be perfect. And, you know, if the children are a little bit older, then, yeah. you know, I wouldn't recommend for young, young children just yeah. because they're so boisterous. They have a, a blue tongue or a partially blue tongue, yeah, don't they? Correct, and of course yeah. you see that in chow chows. Yeah. And you see it with a lot of the, the Chinese ancient dogs, ancient don't Chinese you? Dogs, yeah. But these, these two little dogs here have got sort of half half bluey black tongues. And it's it's really, really fascinating to actually see that. How heavy do you think these are? They could go up to about 24 kilo, I think. They're, they're fully grown. These are, uh, I'd say they're around about 13, 14 kilo at the minute. Yeah. They're only six months. Yeah, they're still quite small though. So what the, the fully grown size of these are going to be what? I'd say around 25 kilo for, yeah. you know, a, a tall Staffy will tell you type A size. tall Staffy. So how old are these two right now? Um, this one's six months and this one's five months. Okay, so they're going to grow, you think, quite oh, a yeah, bit Oh yeah, got a lot this. more than a lot of filling out to do yet. Yeah. And um, the other thing which I've noticed is they have a very oily coat. Yeah, don't it's they? really oily coat. It's yeah, really, really oily. People don't really need to make a lot of effort with the skin because no. obviously there seems to be a lot of oil coming off them. Or do you think people need to? No, do I mean, anything? with the uh, maintenance side of it, they, they, they recommend not to bath them too much because of the the skin exposure. I think they're charismatic and they're fun and cheeky and naughty. And they've been into everything in this house, <laughs> everything. They've been picking everything up and you can see they're wriggling and they're just desperate to get down. But then at the same time, they are puppies. So yeah, puppies, yeah. they will mature and they will change. And of course, if you have them in a home environment and you know, you're, you're, you, you, they calm down and they just settle and you give them plenty of socialization, you mix them with other kids and you mix them and you take them out on walks. Definitely, they're gonna be yeah. fantastic dogs. And um, yes, if you want to check out my other video of unusual dogs, then you can check out the solo video by clicking the information box in the top of the screen, which is the other dog that I was talking about. It was incredibly fascinating from Mexico and has no, no fur. Very, very similar in a way in a look, to yeah. this dog. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel by clicking the button in the bottom of the screen. And please tune in every single week for some more fascinating videos on dogs, wolves, animals, animal rescue and conservation. Bye for now.
If you would like to find out more about the Chinese chonking dog, you can contact Dave through his Facebook page, Lion Dogs UK. Thank <laughs> you.